Good morning and welcome to Food for Thought. It's Tuesday, January the 26th, 2020. My name is Pastor Clint Lang with Hillside Community Church of 100 Mile, B.C., Canada. Glad you could all join us with this wonderful day ahead of us. And it's a good day to start in the Word. And uh, today we're continuing on in the book of James, in chapter 2 of James. Uh, today's lessons going to focus upon two kinds of faith. Faith without deeds, which James calls demonic faith, and faith with deeds, which is what James refers to as true faith. Now, some people are deeply religious, but their religion does not translate into a change in their lifestyle. Now, if there's no change in a person's lifestyle, then that person needs to really question whether the faith that they claim to have is genuine saving faith or if it's just religion. Faith is not just going through ceremony. It's not just attending church meetings. It's not just observing special festivals and events or singing good worship songs, sitting under good teaching, saying prayers, or even just reading the Bible. Far too often Christianity has become self-focused and consumer-oriented. It becomes all about me and how my spiritual needs get met on my own spiritual journey without really caring for the needs of other people around us. James speaks to the church about faith that is accompanied by works and faith without any works at all. In verse 14, James writes, What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds, can such a faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith, and I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God? Good. Even the demons believe that, and they shudder. So James brings forward a shocking analogy. He compares faith without good works akin to the same kind of faith that demons have. In his thinking about this, I, uh, I think we can say that demons, they truly believe in God, but they have irreverent, unrepentant spirits. Their knowledge of the truth has brought no change in the way that they live or behave. Now, a person that's truly come to be saved, their saving faith translates into good behavior and action. It's really that without the action, you have to question whether it's true faith. He continues by saying this in verse 20. You foolish person, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and faith was made complete by what he did. So the example of Abraham is used by James. He, he relates that really Abraham, not knowing how God was going to accomplish 
his purpose, he did what didn't really make sense to his flesh. He offered Isaac up on the altar. He knew that God had promised that he was going to be a great nation and his descendants would outnumber the stars in the universe. So he trusted in the Lord and did what God told him to do even though it didn't make sense to him. He stepped out of his comfort zone to give everything to God and to place his trust in the Lord. His faith was accompanied by willingness to let go and willingness to approach discomfort for the sake of God's instructions and obeying the truth. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. And he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. Hmm. Seems kind of like a contradiction, possibly. Hmm. Martin Luther thought so. Martin Luther famously disliked James because he read this verse that we just read in James 2.24, that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. That's what he took it as. To be a contradiction with Paul's writings in Galatians chapter 2.16, that a person is justified not by the works of the law, but by faith alone in Jesus Christ. Other leaders of the Protestant Reformation, um, they didn't share Luther's view, but Luther's objection came to be uh, dominant in the Protestant reading of James chapter 2. Although we cannot go into the long debate about Luther and um, the book of James here, and uh, we can inquire briefly, I guess, um, whether or not James' emphasis, emphasis on works is at odds with the Protestant stand of justification uh, by faith alone. Is, it, is there a contradiction here? Well, if you look at it and what James was trying to say in the context of what he was trying to say, Unequivocally, I, I think we can look at James here and say there is no contextual contradiction to what God is saying through Paul in Galatians to what James is saying here. Um, it's important for us to see James and what he's writing here in the context of what God wanted the people to understand when James was writing this. You see, I want you to listen to this very carefully because I, this is so important to understand. Uh, James does not command Christians to work for the benefit of others in need instead of placing faith in Christ or even in addition to placing their faith in Christ. So he's not exchanging works here for placing faith in Christ or adding anything on to it. Um, he expects that Christians will work for the benefit of others in need of help as a result of placing their faith in Christ. Big difference. You see, in the same way, James says, was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction. So Rahab the prostitute is another example that James gives. Uh, Rahab lived in the city of Jericho when the Israelites entered the promised land. If you remember the famous story about them marching around the walls of Jericho, Rahab hid the spies and protected them. So what is James saying here? Well, actually, she recognized that God was against her own nation. Her own nation was wicked, and she was part of that. And Rahab recognized that the Lord God of the Israelites was 
the one who she should be fearing. So as a result, she hid the spies and she protected the spies. And as a result of her faith in God, her actions accompanied that. She realized her nation of Jericho was doomed and was going to be destroyed. So she desired to see change, both in herself and in her nation. And that's why she gave lodging to these guys. Now, it's interesting. Her newfound faith in Jehovah was blessed by God. God didn't consider her former sins as disqualifying her to be accepted into the Israelite tribes. As a matter of fact, she married into the tribe of Judah and uh, was the mother of uh, Boaz. Her husband was Salmon, and Boaz was of the house and the lineage of King David. As a matter of fact, in Matthew we see that God didn't leave Rahab outside the camp. He brought her smack dab in the center of Jesus Christ's family tree. Rahab was a relative of the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that interesting? So that's why this is used. Her faith was accompanied by her actions. And God considered that. And James finishes off in verse 26 saying, As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. So there's, there's really no contradiction between James and Romans. And Luther was wrong. You see, true believers cannot separate their spiritual life from the outpouring of life which translates into good behavior and actions. True belief, true faith, always precedes good works. This is food for thought.